everyone, it's me, Diana, the Doll Fairy. You might not have recognized me at first because I am dressed as Mirai Suenaka, the official mascot of Culture Japan and the Smart Doll brand designed by Danny Chu. In my last video, I showed you how I made a Doll Fairy dress for my Mirai Smart Doll to wear to Anime NYC late last year. Today, I'll show you how I made this Mirai summer uniform for myself to wear to the convention. And next time, the final video in this three-part video series will be the long-awaited convention vlog, where I'll take you along with me to check out the convention, chat with Danny Chu himself, and meet a bunch of other smart doll friends. So here is the official art for Mirai school uniform found on the Culture Japan website. I don't know how to make human clothes from scratch, or even from a real pattern, but I do have experience in winging it. I went on Amazon and I found a cheap orange skater skirt and a button-down blouse. The sizing was kind of weird, so it was a gamble. <laughs> Not to mention I had to buy a kid's size for the shirt, but the gamble paid off and the items seemed like they could definitely work with just a bit of tweaking. I started with the most straightforward thing, adding ribbon and pleated trim to the hem of the skirt. As you can see, I pretty much just eyeballed the positioning of the ribbon, which generally works better for me than using exact measurements. I tend to get confused and mess things up when math is involved in my crafting. Then I followed the same basic process for stitching on the trim. This part was very zen and satisfying, and I was gaining confidence with using the sewing machine once again. Now that the easy part is finished, it's time to tackle the shirt. I will need to create the whole sailor collar and figure out how best to attach it to the main shirt. I start by just kind of brainstorming how to construct the piece and using my measuring tape to get a basic idea that I can base my pattern on. I guess I'll have to cut the existing collar off at some point, or at least fold it underneath, but I'll figure out those logistics later. Again, really just winging it here. It took me a while to think it through, but I came up with a basic diagram for the front part before starting to create the actual pattern. I do the same sort of brainstorming for the back part of the collar piece, keeping my reference pictures close by. Once I've got it in my mind, I use a large piece of tissue paper for the first iteration of my pattern. I start with my measurements and then sketch in the curves freehand. As you can see, a lot of my time was spent being puzzled and pondering deeply about the best way to approach things. And also hyping myself up by listening to some music. I was honestly just figuring everything out as I went along, and I made a bunch of mistakes. But that's how we learn. When the shape looks right to me, I cut out the pattern and then test it out by draping it over my shoulders in front of my mirror, which apparently I did not film. Through this process though, I determined that some changes needed to be made to the angles and the shapes. So I just kind of kept adjusting and through trial and error, eventually came up with a revised version of the pattern. Now it's time to get our fabric out and start actually making it real. 
I'm using this orange cotton that matches the skirt almost perfectly. I start by pinning the pattern down on a fold and tracing around it. Then with the dressmaker's pencil and my transparent ruler, I create a seam allowance of half an inch all around the pattern piece. Once I've cut it out and traced the other side of the pattern onto the piece as well, I realized that I forgot about the upside down V shape in the back. So I first adjust the pattern and then transfer that change to my fabric as well. I cut out another piece of fabric the same size and shape and matched them up together. I was going to sew them together then, but then I remembered something else, that I should stitch the white ribbon along the top piece first. So that's what I do. I have my seam allowance at half an inch, so I draw a guideline for my ribbon at one full inch from the edge of the fabric. This guideline has to be adjusted when it comes to the corners, but I work it out somehow. Now I stitch on the ribbon. I do this once on the inside edge of the ribbon and again on the outside edge of the ribbon so that it lays flat. I'm careful about those sharp corners, setting the machine to stop with the needle down inside the fabric so that I can pause, lift the presser foot, and turn the whole piece at the corners. And now we can sew the two orange layers together. I use a lot of pins to make sure nothing slips out of place, and then I stitch along the outside edge of the shape, following my original guideline from my pattern. I leave the part that will go around the neck open because that is where I will be attaching it to the top of the shirt. I clip all of the edges of the curve so that I can flip the piece inside out properly. Then I iron it flat with my mini iron, although this is one instance where a real iron would have been a better choice. I turn my attention to the top of the shirt and try to figure out those pesky logistics of how to attach the collar. You can tell I'm confused by the amount of times I undo and then redo things. I decide to remove the old collar completely as it is too much excess fabric to be left in the shirt comfortably. When that's done, I pin my collar piece to the edge with a lot of care to the appearance of symmetry. And not a lot of care to the look of the inside edge. It's inside so I can't be bothered to make it look more refined. I don't have time anyway. Did I mention I was making this like a week before the convention? Yeah. 
I stitch the collar to the shirt and voila! Now for this little inner piece that peeks out from underneath the collar. I do a little measuring, but mostly freehand the pattern for this piece. I decided to attach this piece to the inside of the shirt using snaps, since I still need to be able to unbutton the shirt or I'll be trapped in it forever. I obviously hand stitched those on, but I didn't film that. This piece will need the Culture Japan logo painted on a white diamond shape. I sketched the shape in before painting it white with acrylic paint. I know, I should have used fabric paint, but oh well. Each sleeve also needs a tiny orange CJ diamond as well. I hand stitched the diamond shapes to the sleeves. And now we are finished with the majority of the outfit. Let's check out how it looks with this wig I bought, also from Amazon. It's really too red for Mirai, but I was not willing to pay for a more expensive wig, so I'm good with this one. It is very long and pretty though, for being a fairly cheap wig. Please ignore my messy room and makeupless face, but yeah, not bad so far. Next, Mirai has a lovely blue bow, so I bought this wide satin ribbon in royal blue, and I create a really nice bow by sewing it together instead of actually tying it. It was way more work this way, but you'll see it looks way nicer. I sew on another snap button to the back of the bow so that I will be able to attach it and detach it from the ribbon loop that will go underneath the collar. I also decided to make a couple of small adjustments to get the shirt to fit me better. I followed the seams that are already running along the back of the shirt and fold them over a little bit to create a tighter fit along the small of my back, which makes the front of the shirt look better too. Clearly, I don't know any of the proper tailoring terminology, but anyway, it all worked out. The last piece to complete my cosplay is Mirai's white X hair clip. 
I didn't feel like getting fancy with this, so I simply made it out of two layers of adhesive craft foam. Here you see me glue a bobby pin to the back, but I'm pretty sure it didn't stick at all, and I ended up slipping the bobby pin through the center of the X instead, which was a lot more secure. I wore some long black socks that I had bought for a Serena cosplay a few years ago, and wore some brown loafer style shoes of my mom's, and my transformation is complete. It turns out that doll magic can work on people too sometimes. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video, even though it's something a little bit different than usual. Um, it certainly was fun to kind of go outside of my comfort zone and try something different. Now that both Mirai and I have our outfits all ready for the convention, it's time to go on our adventure. Here is a sneak peek of our Anime NYC adventure. Here I am in my Mirai cosplay. And my Mirai is cosplaying as the doll fairy, okay? So I made her a doll fairy costume, I made her these shoes, and she's wearing a wig that looks more like my hair. So, yeah. So I'm here at the Smart Doll booth now, and I'm gonna go say hello to Danny Chu. Coming soon to the Doll Fairy channel. I hope that you'll subscribe to the Doll Fairy if you haven't yet. I would really love to get to 100,000 subscribers at some point, so please help me out if you can. I'd like to take a moment to say a big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Their support makes all of this doll magic possible. If you're interested in supporting the Doll Fairy and seeing bonus content like works in progress, exclusive collaborations, and early access to videos, check out the link in the description below to check out my Patreon page. And check it out for yourself and see if you'd like to join. We'd love to see you there. I hope you had fun. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you again very soon for more doll magic. Bye.